everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost, and guess what? It is uh, April's DigiKit time, so if you're interested in taking a peek at the new DigiKits for April, I'm going to show them to you here. Plus, we're also going to make something very simple. Um, we're going to make a quick little journal um, using one of the DigiKits, so you can kind of see how to do that in an easy, um, hopefully pretty much effortless way. And first of all, let me show you the kits. So the first one is called... Doo -doo -doo -doo. Do, 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 do. Dragon Lore. This one is called Dragon Lore, and I've been looking for dragon pictures for quite a while now, and I finally found enough to assemble um, a DigiKit, uh, which is a printable. This is um, something you can print out at home, um, and then use in your artwork any way you like, and on, in your junk journals. They're great for um, making pockets and tucks and uh, belly bands, journal cards, all sorts of fun things. They're theme-related. And I have over 200 um, different choices of DigiKits right now. Um, but these are the new additions for April 2023. And if you want to find an easy way to just find my DigiKits or my printables, go to www.thepaperoutpost.com and that will take you to um, my personal Etsy shop, which only shows my stuff. Sometimes it's, Etsy is a little confusing because it's a search engine and when you pu punch in in the regular search field on Etsy, the paper outpost or paper outpost or paper outpost shop, you're going to see my stuff mixed with other people because it kind of works like Google where you punch in something and you get what you're looking for plus a bunch of other stuff that you weren't necessarily looking for. So if you really want to be sure to only purchase my stuff, then go to www thepaperoutpost.com and it's still Etsy. Behind the scenes it's Etsy. Your payments are normal like Etsy. Everything is normal. The only difference is you just see my stuff. Okay, there you go. Um, okay, so this is Dragon Lore and that's going to be the one we're going to make something out of. I thought this one would be kind of fun because um, you could use this for male or female and anybody who likes, you know, old time periods or medieval or you know, really older than medieval, maybe pagan stories, things like that. Um, if you're a Game of Thrones person, if you, um, uh, just like dragon stuff, this, this could be your ticket. So that is dragon lore. And the next one is flower fantasy. Can never have too many flowers. And I found some very beautiful flower imagery recently and I wanted to share it with you. So a little closer so you can see these. Whoop, a little smaller so you can so you can see these. Okay. Very beautiful uh, variety of flowers, different kinds of flowers, different expressions with flowers. Um, very old imagery, old illustrations, beautiful botanical illustrations that I think just need to be heralded and sung uh, from the rooftops, spread you never have too many beautiful flowers and we are coming into spring so I thought this would be a nice time to uh, introduce another pretty flower um, series and I give you some different sizes here so you can have fun with it and this one is called flower fantasy um, I try and make the names very easy to understand what they are and also uh, but if you're going to do the print and mail service where I print them out for you um, make sure you pick 10 digi kits and then send me your list of 10 names. I'm sorry, there's no drop-down list or anything. It just doesn't work that way on Etsy for this particular situation. Um, but you just send me the list of the 10 names to through Etsy message or to Pam at thepaperoutpost.com. And the only thing that you do is uh, you don't need to buy each individual digikit. You just buy the print and mail option, send me your list. That includes uh, free priority shipping, and I will print those out on a nice lightweight card stack, stock, and you can... Uh, you will get those um, as soon as I print them and send them out, which is usually pretty quick. Okay, so here we have, well, here's an original title, Frogs. Yeah, there you go. Um, again, I was looking for a lot of frog pictures, and finally I found enough to assemble a beautiful uh, digi-kit. So if you are a frog aficionado, this could be your lucky day. Um, I think these images are really beautiful, really cool, all a little bit different. And uh, so if you're... A Anybody who's into science or you just like frogs, they're your lucky, maybe you collect frogs, they're your um, happy creature, that type of thing. Um, here's a fun and a variety filled pack of frog-like images. So very fun. And there's a little frogger in every picture. Okay, so that is frogs. Okay. And then the next one is Here's a little different take. I call this one Fabulous Foods. Fabulous Foods. Okay, so it's basically fruits and vegetables, I would say. Let me get a little closer there. Okay. 
And um, so just gorgeous imagery if you're going to be doing a recipe book or a cookbook or maybe you just want to do a uh, maybe a summer harvest book, something like that. A lot of fun images. There's some ads. Here's one from 1901. Um, and different ways foods are incorporated into ads or just beautiful pictures of peaches and apples and pears and corn and onions and cantaloupes and mushrooms and watermelon and pears. Just a lot of fun tomatoes. Um, there you go. And then the last one is called Nature in Neutrals. Nature in Neutrals. So um, neutral themed journals are very popular. Um, I'm going to zoom these in a little bit because they're, they're delicate, very old images. Okay, so uh, this different expressions in nature, very old illustrations, but very beautiful in their own right. And I just thought, you know, it would be nice to have people enjoy these beautiful images again because um, they're, just, they're just lovely. They just, you know, harken back to calmer times. Here's one of my favorites. I love that little picture of her looking out the window. Um, how nice is that? Um, Times were simpler. You know, life was calmer. E I don't know if it was calmer and easier, but uh, I, I think it was just, you know, in my fant fantastical imagination, I think it was a calmer, easier time. They didn't have cell phones. There was no beepers. There was no internet. It was just you and whatever you were doing and maybe a little bit of nature along the way. So that is nature in neutrals. So let's move along to our little project of the day. And let me find, okay, here is dragon lore. All right, so let me cut these up. I'll be right back. Okay, I thought I'd just turn this on. Are we on? Okay, just so this is me finishing up um, doing the, the cutting. So I use a guillotine cutter to cut these. My goal is to make these easy for you to cut out. I hope I'm doing a good job at that because you know, I, I feel it when I am cutting. I'm thinking, oh, that was easy or that was not easy. I try and give you enough um space around the image so if you want to have a white border you can do that if you don't want the white border you can just close trim it and i love these old old um drawings they're just so cool just something so i don't know historical i guess and um oh, i've got two more pages hang on okay i am back moving the cutter putting these aside okay so let's grab this time I'm going to use, um, this is just a junk mail envelope that came. And um, the dimensions, in case you're curious, are 9 by 12 and a half. Okay, so that just happens to be the one I'm using today. And I thought I have gone ahead. This is optional, but if you want it to be a little bit stiffer, like fold it in half and decide whether that's going to be thick enough for your cover. And that's a personal choice. You'll get used to what thickness you like after a while. But the regular envelope, I wanted a little thicker. So I'm going to take two pieces of cardstock and pop them inside here. And that's going to give me the thickness that I want. Now I'm going to add DigiKits to this. That's going to even make it stronger and thicker. So yay. And then I'm going to seal this up. So it's all one piece. Okay. Uh, okay. Get it off the finger. Off the finger. Okay. Here we go. All right. So this is going to be our cover. And I did cut that entire uh, digi kit up. So I have all these pictures to play with. And um, we'll just see, you know, how this all pans out. I pulled out 20 sheets of... Uh, hand dyed paper, avocado, blue, green, some uh, grid paper, uh, just random things. You could use book pages. I did some stencil pages in here just for fun. So that's going to 20 and you multiply that by four because we're going to fold it. So we're going to have front, back, front, back. So that's going to give us 80 pages in this journal pretty quickly. Okay, so that's a nice size little journal for anybody that you're thinking about making a journal for. Uh, maybe it's yourself. And, uh, okay, so I'm going to gather all of these together as best as I can. That's going to fit. Yeah, I think it is. And uh, this is just regular printer copy paper. Am I recording? Yes. Okay. That's like the, the YouTuber's greatest fear. You're yapping away and you're not recording. Um, okay, so I'm going to put that here. I'm going to make a big, big old fold. I'm going to grab my bone folder. Now, 20 is a lot to go through, but we're going to give it a go with the 
crocodile big bite. See if we can punch some holes through this. And let's fold this so we know our dimensions of our book. I think it's going to be okay. All right. So this journal is going to end up being, might be a little wide, but we can, we can play with that. Um, nine by six and a quarter. So that's fine. That's fine. We're just dandy. And if I want to put a little spine in here, which I could, and that will shrink up the sides a little bit. Okay, let's see where it sticks out to now. I'm inserting my signature in here. So right now I have about half an inch. I could use a little bit less than that. And I could use a little thicker area for the spine. So I think what I'm going to do is just make a thicker spine area. This is the easiest way to do it. You grab your bone folder, you fold it in half. And then you go maybe, if you're smart, you would use a measuring thing here, but I'm just going to go over maybe like like um, a quarter of an inch. Now well, it looks pretty good. And score it. And then same thing on the other side. And that's going to be a little bit bigger of a spine, and that's going to also reduce the, the width length of my cover so it'll fit a little bit more nicely. Hoping, hoping. That is going to go as planned. Okay, and then there's the middle one, which I already have, which I should probably fold again just to get that good crease so I can see it. Now, I want to decide where I'm going to place this. So I'm going to put this here. I'm going to line it up with the middle spine. Um, and I'm going to pick three hole spots. One, two, on the middle spine and three, maybe about an inch, inch up and an inch down on average. Okay. And now I'm going to go ahead and take this. If I can do it all together, that would be nice. I can't see what I'm doing. Um, yeah, I better do it separately. Okay. Grabbing the crocodile to big bite, turning this over so that I can actually see the dots. You can paper clip these all together. If you feel like they're going to run around, I think they feel okay. I'm going to use the one eighth or the small hole. This, that's the big hole puncher. The one in the middle is the small hole puncher or the one eighth. It's marked on the device and you just want to punch right where the spine is. And actually it, it does that easily. This big powerful tool, which makes me feel like the Hulk, which is awesome. Now make sure you know what end is top and bottom. I just rotated it. Did you see that to get this one in there? It's very, very important to know which is the top and the bottom. So the top. Okay. Okay. I just let me a little mark of something. Okay. I should have done that in pencil. I thought it was pencil. It wasn't. Okay. So this is my top. That's my top. I'm just going to put that over there for a second. I'm just going to punch these now so that I have them. <clears throat> so I hope you're having a dandy day. And 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 I did turn it around did you see that so may but be mindful of where the top was it was here the top okay making a little mark so that means when I put all this back together which now these have migrated because I didn't put a, a thing um, where's my top there's my top there's my top there's my top so it's gonna go in like this very important it will save you hours of crying in the dark wondering what has become of you in your life and why won't your journals align properly. So it's a very easy fix. Um, huh. Maybe I'll do a combination green and brown. This is wax uh, thread. You can also use embroidery floss or other kinds of uh, threads and twines. But I thought green and brown might be nice for a, a uh, dragon journal. There's only one signature in this, so it's pretty easy to assemble. I'm going to multiply the height by three. So one, okay, just move that. Yep, two, and then three. And my little skizzers are here. Um, then we're going to take our old friend, big fat eye needle, yarning or darn needle. Uh, you can get them at Walmart or other places, Joanne's Crafts, Amazon, Etsy, eBay, but it just makes life so much easier. Just get that right through there and you're, you're golden. So we're going to do the old three hole pamphlet stitch going through the middle, going through the middle, knowing which way was up, right? The top going through the back, finding the hole, going through the back. And 
and then back here, and then through the middle again, yet again. So we all come home the same way. All right, so we should have enough left over. You can, um, let me just move that out of the way. I can't get that out of the shot. Okay, uh, uh, hi. okay, that's as good as I can do. There's only so much room on this giant table. Okay, so I'm just gonna even it up a little bit by pulling, and I'm gonna make sure that my bridge has the angel wings that go underneath it. They need to go underneath it, and then they're gonna wrap around the bridge and cuddle the bridge left over right, right over left, so you get a nice tight knot. And then one more be in case you messed up. Yeah, like I mess up all the time, so oop. Like right there, I didn't get my knot ski in the right place. I don't know which one is loose. Let me see. Okay, there it tightened. So we are good. I'm just going to fold these down. Now, I'm going to take this, fold it, give it its normal spine. And I think I need to re... I need to fold where I did those score lines to give it more of a determined, clear set spine. All right, come here. Come here. Okay. No, that's pretty good. Actually, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this ruler. I'm going to hold it along the spine line, or the outer spine line, my little fatter spine I've created here. I'm going to fold up. And you can even take your bone folder and run that under there. And that helps you form that crease. Okay? So, and then you get in there and you, you fold it down really well. And see what I'm creating on the back? There's like a little bit of an edge there. And then you want to come in and fold that even more so. Okay, so now we're going to flip it around. Now, I've, I've lost top and bottom right now in my mind. I think this is the bottom. But I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to take this, put it right on the uh, crease where I want that fold to be. I'm going to take it and hand fold it first. Hand train the paper. And fold that in there a little bit more. And then come in and do a real human, old-fashioned, bookbinding fold thing for the spine thing. <laughs> and that'll give me a little bit fatter of a spine. That's also shortening these up a little bit. Now, if these are still long, which apparently they're still long, so I could have done a wider spine, but I don't think this particular journal is going to need a wider spine. I think that little half-inch spine is going to do dandy. I can fold these little edges in. Yeah, I can just do this. I can just glue them in, or I can cut them off and glue them in. You can do all sorts of things. But I think I'm going to do that. Is that good? That was probably too much. Back out a bit, retreat, try for a half inch, I think might be better. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so let's try this on the bottom. This paper's not that thick, I can hand fold it. All right, and just kind of work with the paper. So there's a lot of ways to accommodate things not fitting exactly. You don't have to take everything apart, cut things apart. You can just, a lot of folding will, will help cure a lot of ills. Now, I'm going to come in here and glue this baby down, but we might want to cover it with something on top just to give it a nice little uh, finished edge. It's going to take a second because that's a, that's a hard fold there. Okay. And the bone folder will help with that. And that glue does grab well. That's Fabrifix glue. If you've never seen it, that's what the bottle looks like. It's a clear silicone glue. Fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper. Okay, I said it. All right, so this... Just get that a little straighter. Straight is not my uh, strength, apparently. That's okay, though. We craft on. We don't let these things stop us from crafting. We just carry on, keep having fun. Um, fun is for everyone. Okay, there we go. And maybe I will grab something just to decorate that up a little bit. Oh, what do I have here? These guys are just sitting here doing nothing. Some black ribbons. I think I cut this off of clothing. These are those weird hanger things that I never use, so they are now going to be craft supplies. Um, so use what you got. Maybe you've got some thread. Maybe you've got, I don't know, go, go look. Go look in your closet. You're going to find this stuff. It's everywhere. Um, okay, pop that down. Okay. Try for straight. Try. Do your best. Okay. That's kind of cute. I like that. It's a nice way to bridge that little gap ski. Okay, let's flip her over. <coughs> Sorry. 
coming down here, putting the other one on, putting all this stuff to good use. Feeling good about that, yay. Trying for straight again. Okay, not bad, not bad, not bad. Oh, land it down, land it down. <sighs> okay. There we go. And over here, trimming. Yeah. Now, we have our cover. Okay, so this is the bottom because that's where I put my tail. So I know it goes like that. If I was unsure, I can still look at my little mark that tells me that was the top. And there was a little mark on here told me that was the top. Okay, so now I'm all nestled and perfectly aligned inside of here. So let's go ahead and decorate it with the DigiKit. All right, so I'm going to get a dauber. This is going to be a very simple construct. Just somebody wants to, you know, get used to making things easily without a lot of pressure or stress or anything like that. Um, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to ink the outside of this because it just will really pop nicely. This is Distress Oxide Vintage Photo. Just because it's a brown that I happened to grab, it was right here. Found it again. I'm probably going to, I don't know, I think I'm going to, I don't know yet. I was going to say, I'm probably going to cover this uh, spine with something, but haven't fully decided yet. Let's wait till the, the project is finished and then we will know what we are going to do. But these are, this is dry. Okay, come in here. There we go. Let's tap. Okay, there's going to be color everywhere. Okay, woohoo. Reading it with water really does wake it up. Okay, there we go. And I probably want to do the insides too. Now, excuse me if I'm going kind of fast here, but I just want to show you the process so you can get it. You can feel free to slow me down or stop the video, rewind, um, or you're just keeping up and you're just doing it anyway and having a grand old time. Maybe I want to put something over that just to seal it. Uh, I'm just going over. I'm not far. No, I have not left the building very far. I'm right here. Okay, I'm back. And um, this is just another piece of ribbon I found. It's a pretty cream ribbon. I thought that might look nice there. So I'm just, I'm just going to do it. Um, what wrong one? Not with that glue. You're not Sally. Back over here. Okay, come on down the river. Okay. Alrighty. Okay, there we go. All right, so we have a nice little uh, pretty seam binding there, which looks nice. Okay, so on my front cover, I thought I would use this picture because it's a very impressive dragon-like, fire-breathing, moonscape, cool sort of thing. And I think this would be really fun. So I love dragons, dragon stories, uh, things like that. Mama dragons, you know, like, uh, I don't know. I just like all that lore. I think it's fun, interesting. And, you know, it was quite the thing back in the day. Okay, so I'm just going to put that there as the front. And I think I'm going to use Fabrifix for this. It'll give a nice, quick, strong grab. You can carry on quickly crafting. That's probably one of the main reasons I like this glue, because it does grab fast, but it doesn't, like, grab so you can't ever get it up again. I'm going to put it a little lower in case I want to put something at the top. I'm not sure yet. Maybe a word or something. Maybe I don't know. Okay, so there's the front, okay, and now let's do some um, inside pocket action. Oh, his is nice. Oh, look at him. Yes, he's quite impressive. And uh, maybe I'll pick a, oh, there was one I wanted to do. Oh, hang on, I'm, I'm rummaging. I've got choices here. I'm enjoying my choices, but there was one I had my eye on, I think, maybe, okay, maybe you. And for the front and the back, maybe something very simple. And then we'll put like the, oh, that's it, this one. I like that's really cool. Not maybe this or this. Uh, that's going to go like that. And this is going to go like that. Maybe this one back here. I like the colors with that better. I am going to ink this. And I'm going to turn this into a little pocket in the front. I think it's just kind of cool. Yep. But I want to do something more to that page. And I think I want to do a stencil or something. Something stencil. Okay, here we go. Here's a weird stencil. Um, I'm going to grab my little, because this looks, I don't know, dragon-y like. Is that, I don't know why it looks dragon-y like, but it looks like maybe the dragon's cave or something like that. So I'm just going to put some of this down with a paddle brush. Just random. Nothing official, just sort of 
you know, scattered. It almost looks like dragon scales, doesn't it? Yeah, that's kind of cool. Okay. Okay. There we go. That's cool. All right. So now, now you are going to become the pocket. So that's how quickly these babies can come together. When you get focused and you start thinking with your turnip. And you guys do. You guys are good turnip thinkers. Okay, so there's the front. And here's the back. Let's go ahead and ink this baby up. And maybe I'm just going to put him right in the center and maybe make him a little belly band or something. Just something a little different. Do I want to put, maybe I'll put the scales on the back too since that was sort of a, a pretty look. Yeah, okay, well, there we go. I'm not very gentle with my stencils and I rarely wash them. It's the truth. Full reveal. <laughs> Full transparency. Okay, there we go. Where'd you go? Here you are. Yeah, all right. So I'm just going to, a belly band basically just has some glue at the top, some glue at the bottom. But can also, you can also do it sideways. So this is just the glue at the top, glue at the bottom version. And I just think that looks really cool. So that means there's an opening through here so I can tuck things in there, which is very fun. All right, so now as we traverse into the center, what will we find? Um, okay, let's see, color scheme, color scheme. Let me just back you up a little bit so you can see a little better. Oh, I've got so many wonderful pictures to pick from. Oh, wait, get myself organized. Oh, that's a cool one. So this is a dragon attacking from the side. Maybe I'm going to do... Um, Maybe we're going to do an upper upper tuck pocket here. That would be fun. Um, although this would be great. No, I can do this one. Sometimes making the decision, that's the hardest one. That's kind of cool, though. That's, that's pretty cool. Maybe we're going to do an upper pocket here. Yeah, that's what I'll do. So that has a lower pocket. This has an upper pocket. And it's going to be U-shaped blue like that on the back. All right. Do, 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 do. Okay. So we have... That. Okay, so maybe I'll do one, two, three, four, five. And oh, you are beautiful. You are beautiful. I think you would look, you would be a nice belly band right in the center. Um, and here and here. I have to remember what these are. I have to, I'll have to test them. This way it allows these pieces to dry as you move forward. Okay, so I do it well. Two, three, five. Okay, so let's do an upper and a lower. That would be fun. Oh, I need to. Whoop. Okay. Maybe I want to take a little bit of this off. Yeah. And the same width. Yeah, so we'll leave you the same width. Okay, so this is actually dragon bones. Yep, the dragons do pass away, apparently. They have a lifespan, just like the rest of us. Yeah, in case you didn't know. Apparently, they're not immortal. Well, according to that picture, or else it got killed by an enemy or something like that. But uh, here's the dragon in its day, and then here's the dragon after its day. Okay, so I'm going to do U-shaped pockets. Um, one up here. And then one down here. Now you could do two separate items tucked into there, or you could do one long piece that gets tucked under both edges. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, I, do, I do like this one. That's a really cool piece. Um, okay, what we're, we're going to do with you is we're just going to innocently make you, I'm not even going to ink you because you've got a lot of color. This is an easy one. This is just a side tuck. The only side glued is this side and you can tuck things in here. Very easy one to do. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. And then we'll do a caddy corner one, which is always nice. Maybe this one here and this one down here. And they will be L shaped gluings. So they're corner tucks. That's what I call them. Oh, I want to ink these. I'm sorry. I seem to be developing a little cough today. Um, okay. There we go. There's one corner tuck. So sometimes you need a little gift for the pet sitter or 
nephew or niece is coming over and you just want a little something, this, you know, put it down. Tell yourself where the glue is going to go. That'll save you hours of agony. Pro I promise. I promise. Um, and there you go. All right. Two, three, four, five. Okay, so now um, I'm going to take some smaller ones, I think. Let me find some smaller ones. And um, this is going to be... I don't know if I've ever done this one. It just sort of came to me, but we're going to try this. We're going to ink them. Do, 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 Okay, that. And then maybe, who, on the top. Dun, 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 dun. No, we need something a little colorful up there. Okay, you will work. Okay, so contrasting colors here, but we're going to do a a flippity doodah. Okay, so we're going to glue this one going to be a, a side tuck. This one is also going to be the same side tuck. Okay. And then this one is going to be a tuck on this side. So you're going to be able to tuck something down of the center. So the piece is going to fit in. Well, if everything stays put when it's glued, it'll fit down the center tucked under here tucked under here, and then of course this is still moving on me, but I would bring this to the front, and then it would be holding it from the front. So that's how that one will operate. That's kind of fun, I should put this lower. Oh. Okay. There we go. Yes, okay, one, four. Mm -hmm. I, I love this yellow page. I just want to put something cool on it, like maybe this guy, he's just awesome. I'm just going to not ink him because I want him to stand out against the bright yellow. And I'm just going to make a, a belly band that is here so something can slide in there. Very fun. Two, three, four, five. Oh, that's very pretty. Uh, so with something like this, I might want to put a neutral on here. So this might be just a very simple right bottom corner tuck. You don't have to put 10 things on one page. You can just put one simple thing. That's fine. Remembering where my glue is going. This is the L-shaped corner tuck, and there you go, and then we have, and then we're pretty much done there. So I still have a lot left, and what I could do with this, but I just want to show you the basic, oh, hang on, what's that? It was the mail lady. Okay, I'm back. Um, okay, so basic construct, oh, maybe we'll put a little bit of that up here, that would look kind of cool, I think. Maybe that's going to be the topper. Uh-huh. Let's see what that looks like. That looks kind of cool. Maybe I can do that down the sides, too. Yeah, so these are very easy to make. And there, you're pretty much done. Um, you could decorate the back as well. Maybe I'll just put this on the back. I think that would look very neat. All right. That's the big finale. Oh, this one's really pretty, too. Oh, with this guy. Yeah, he's... He's got some snort power. Let's use him. And the rest of these you can use as journal cards, journal tags. Um, you can make little greeting cards out of them. You can uh, do all sorts of fun things. I think that would look really cool. Okay. I'll do a big U-shaped pocket and I'll pop something in there. It'll be fun and dragon-like. Maybe one of those journal cards or something. I'll put this on too. Just a little bit of hewing here with the dragon scales. It doesn't have to be everywhere. It can be patchy. That's okay. And the dragon's lair with the bricks. There's bricks on here too. I think this is a Tim Holtz thing if anybody's looking that for that. Okay, for the big finale, I'm just going to move all these babies out of the way. It can be used. I think I'm, I had some of this coffee dyed flour sack paper and I am going to just put the spine piece on there because I think that would look pretty. That's oh, probably the right width. Let's see. Okay. Do, do, do. I don't need it all that long. We can trim it. Okay. There we go. Shredding is good. I, mean, I know this looks very old world, medieval, renaissance, pagan kind of feel. Shroudy kind of stuff. Yeah. Oh, that looks, that looks cool. Okay, so let's pop this baby on. I would say let's put the glue on the center spine and then a little bit on the front and a little bit on the back. And we can always add more, but at least that'll allow us to center it. 
Okay. Finger smoosh, I would recommend here. Finger smoosh. That knocks down the mountains. That way you don't have too much bleed through issue and you can just kind of run your finger for it back and forth so it gets tacky, which is a nice place to be at this point in the project. And then try for center. And you can align the top so you only have to cut the bottom. Okay. Fold. Good, good, good. Okay, we are going to need a little more glue because that does happen. That was expected. We knew it was, go we knew it going in. Finger smoosh. And adhere in the back. Got a little roll over. That's okay though. A little glue in there. Finger smoosh. And then lay it down. And uh, yeah, I had a big cup of coffee this morning. Uh, truth be told. <laughs> um, that might be what's going on here. And okay. Okay, and you can shreddy, like shredded weed it at the bottom. I think that looks kind of cool. And just nip off there, snip off what you can, and then um, shred. There you go. So now there we go. We're done. And we've got some things in there to play with. We can fill them in. We have lots of writing room. This could be a nice writing journal. And you're done. So I hope you like these. And let's just take a peek at the DigiKits again if you're interested in those. So that, this was Dragon Lore. This is boom, 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 Fabulous Foods. This is Frogs. I've had a lot of requests for frogs. So here is Frogs. I have Flower Fantasy. And also nature in neutrals. So there you go, folks. I hope you had fun today. Sonny, he's not right here, so I'm just going to let him rest. And we shall carry on. But he sends his love, I promise you. Uh, but he will be back. He's fine. He's just sleeping on the couch. Um, and um, all right, hang on. Okay. I forgot to bark to let mom know that the mailman woman came. Yep, I was off duty. Bye. <laughs> okay, thank you. Did you bark? Or maybe you did. I don't remember. Okay, so for everybody who is new, welcome. For everybody who's been here, welcome. If you don't know, I have a free monthly email newsletter, which you get um, a bunch of freebies with that. You'll get a free digital image, a checklist of supplies, a note from the bookmaker, and a page list of ideas. Um, along with junk journal tips, updates from me, peaks at new digi kits. My videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern time. My podcasts come, uh, audio come out Tuesdays and Thursdays, new material. And then the other days of the week, there are video podcasts, which you can watch on Spotify. I have an Etsy shop. If you like, um, uh, finished journals, bundles, kits, things like that, when I have them available, I will put them in there for sale for you. And, um, I, I'll sell printables, which I call digi kits. They're five pages of these, basically like these things. And, um, you already know about that. You know about the print mail option. I also sell fundals, which are collections of old and interesting papers that you can use in your junk journals. Um, there's a nice variety of hundred plus pieces and that uh, comes with free priority mail shipping. I have an Amazon shop. If you're looking for favorite tools and supplies that you see me use here, uh, if I can find the link, I will put it in my Amazon shop. Just Google the paper outpost Amazon shop and you will find it and uh, look under the favorite tools and supplies link. And um, that does help my shop, but you do not pay more for using my links. And I also have a t-shirt shop. If you like the phrase create with reckless abandon or everything is a craft supply until proven otherwise. Hey, hey, you can get that on a t-shirt, a sweatshirt, a zip hoodie, a mug, a toter, or a water bottle. How fun and great for gift giving or for yourself. And you can find me on Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, LinkedIn, and Facebook. Come and join our Facebook group. We're having a lot of fun over there doing weekly and monthly challenges. It's called the Paper Outpost Facebook group. And remember most of all that fun can be simple and quick and create with reckless abandon everybody go have some fun today and uh, play with your papers they're always calling for you and they're very patient they wait for you take care everyone bye